I couldn't mention winter fishing at Homersfield without mentioning the roach fishing. Um, the roach fishing is the best roach fishing I've ever had. Without doubt, you know, there's been British record roach swimming around in this lake and there could be one today. But for me, the, the roach fishing is absolutely top notch. I've never fished a, a lake with so many big roach in it. And the sport can be fairly consistent right through the winter. Even when there's ice on the lake, you can still catch the big roach. For as long as I've known Homersfield, it's always produced big roach. It just seems like a big roach factory to me. I always store my maggots in plenty of sawdust, especially if they're going to stay in the van for a few hours. It just stops them from sweating up and getting messy. But before I start fishing, I'm going to riddle some of the sawdust off. Just pop them on there. There's no need to half fill the feeder with sawdust as well as maggots by, by just riddling off the sawdust and having just maggots. It's a lot neater and tidier for feeding them. Just do a few more. I'm gonna start off with maggots, using maggot feeders and maggots as hook bait. The only time I might change over to little mini boilies as hook bait is if we're getting lots of smaller roach. But the first thing we've got to do is get, get a roach. So maggots will be my first choice. And then I'll swap to boilies if I need to be a bit more selective about the, the size of the roach. I think that's just about enough maggots. And I'm going to jump start the swim with about three or four spoms of maggots before I cast the feeders out. Well, this is where I saw a few roach roll in a little while ago. And it has been a very productive swim for me in the past for roach at about 12 or 13 rod lengths. There's a nice area of gravel and the roach just seem to like it on there so I'm gonna get probably like I said three or four more spoms of just maggots out there and then keep recasting the feeders every 15-20 minutes I think my swim choice for big roach here is sort of self-generating I've had swims where I've done quite well in the past so I'm naturally drawn to drop in them again for the roach but they definitely like this part of the lake in the winter time There was already roach in the lake, without a doubt, and sometime in 1980, 1981, we stocked it with some roach that we had acquired from a place up in Scotland. Over the next 20, 30 years, the roach fishing has become prolific uh, within the lake. And being very honest, that wasn't something that we had set out to achieve. Our good friend John Wilson had fished on this lake um, even before we had bought it, most probably in the 1970s, and he was catching nice roach up to two pounds. It seems that the roach go on a cycle. Some years we have more three pound fish than other years. I think one of the reasons that the, the fish grow so well here is the water quality and also the amount of carp food and carp pellets that are put into the lake, obviously the roach are feeding on that as well. Over the years, the lake has produced numerous three pound fish. We know for a fact that we've had three different four pound roach and most probably more because unfortunately carp anglers do catch a lot of roach on their gear. They're not that interested in weighing them so they slip them straight back. So the lake can produce and I'm sure somewhere along the lines there's a record roach in here. Um, which would be lovely to see. I have to be very honest, it's not by design, it's been by accident that the lake has produced so many good roach. Well, they're my go-to little maggot hook links. I, I prefer to use a fluorocarbon hook link for the roach fishing. I find it slightly stiffer than mono, so it's a bit, bit better on the tangle-proof qualities. And I've got a little quick change bead on there, so it makes it really easy just to slide the hook link on. Then if I want to swap over to mini boilies, it's a, it's a five second job. I can take them hook links off and put different hook links on. But like I said, I'm going to start with maggot and, and fish for bites to begin with. Just sink the line and make sure it's nice and tight. I think it's quite important to fish a, a very tight line on these little bolt rigs for roach. And hopefully we'll be able to catch a few roach this afternoon. Well, 
Well, that didn't take too long. They've been out about 10 minutes and the left-hand rod has just had a drop back. Well, it doesn't feel huge, but like I mentioned before, the first thing you've got to do is get a bite. Here he comes. It's only a little fella, so I'm just gonna crouch down and pick him out of the water. It's only a small one, but it's the first bite, which is uh, the important step. I've put a keep net out in the swim. I'm gonna hang on to a few just to see how many we can get this afternoon. So I'll pop that in the keep net and then get the rod put back out. As predicted, the maggot fishing's got fairly hectic straight away. I'm struggling to keep two rods in the water at the same time. Very nice too in the middle of winter to get so many bites. Excuse the second rod, that's... It's mad to think there's roach probably four times that size out there somewhere. Let's just see if there is one on the other rod. Yeah, there's one on the other rod as well. Two smaller ones. safe to say the roach have turned up. It's almost impossible to get two rods in the water now. I have to be a little bit careful bringing these in because there's a drop off out there and once I bring them up the drop off there's still a bit of weed even this time of year. But normally with steady pressure you can just lift them above the weed. I'm fishing in probably about 10 foot of water out there. There's a, a nice gravelly area between sort of 8 and 10 foot depending whereabouts on it I fish but it's the slightly deeper stuff this time of year. Have a nice little clean roach. They really are the fins are bright red and the colours really come out in the winter time. Fish on that is. This one feels a little bit heavier. This is a rod I've switched over to a mini boily. Find that weed again. Come on. There it comes. I'll try and steer him round that bunch of reeds. too bad. Well I thoroughly enjoyed that. I've had a really busy afternoon's roach fishing. Quite a nice average size. There's several in there around that big. I must say that's really whetted my appetite for a bit of roach fishing. I think next time I come down I'll have a, a full day's roach fishing so I'll catch up with you then and fingers crossed for a few more nice big roach. So where does our story begin? Well, it goes back as far as 1958. Um, my father had a business them days um, as a timber merchant. And the story that he tells is that um, on one of his trips to Scotland, he was staying overnight in a pub come stroke guest house. And there was a book there written by a German gentleman about carp farming. Um, for some reason, my dad read it and found it interesting. Um, and it must have planted a seed in his mind um, because he wasn't a fisherman, never was a fisherman actually, throughout his whole life, um, and decided that one day he'd like to have a go at maybe doing carp farming. I think that was the beginning of it all. At that time, we used to advertise in the Farmers Weekly, and Mrs. Rout, my secretary, who always used to make me read it, and under the advert I read six lakes for sale in Norfolk. Prior to that I'd been reading about carp in the hotel I was staying in the winter in Scotland and so I said to my wife let's go up to Waverley Valley Lakes on Sunday. I went down the lakes and I decided to buy it. Simple as that. At the time it was six lakes 
and the gentleman that owned it, a Mr. Smith, was a chicken come pig farmer. I think he'd been affected in the 60s by the disease that the chickens were dying and he needed to sell the lakes. And at that time, my dad looked round, remembered the book that he'd read all those years back in 1958. This was in 1962, actually, that he decided uh, to do this. And um, that was it. He did the deal then and there and so started the history of Waverley Valley Lakes in 1962.